So, an oldie but a goodie, another this old firearm from DR Drake 63 here. Looking today at the Remington Model 12A, which is a pump action 22, uh, capable of shooting the various size 22 rounds. This particular one is from 1912. My son recently just picked this up and. Uh, what a, what a nice looking gun for something that's 109 years old. Today we're going to go over this a little bit, talk about how it works, show you real quickly how you take it down, and of course we're going to shoot it. But a nice looking piece of history here. So lately you've seen a lot of my content focus on 22 Long Rifle. And here's one, dates back to 1944, uh, and this particular one is a Mossberg 44 US trainer, and it's got a big thick barrel and a big thick stock, and it's heavy. Uh, it's meant to be very accurate. It's also meant to kind of replicate the kind of weight that soldiers in World War II would have saw in preparing for something like uh, either an M1 Grand, maybe a 1903 Springfield. Bolt action system, peep sight. Uh, it never was designed to be a looker. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd say it, it, it's in great shape, but it's not a looker in the sense that here's a, a 1974 Marlin 39A, which most definitely is a looker. And uh, this, this firearm is in great shape. So I really like it. And that's a lever action. Well, next one you're going to look at is the oldest firearm I've ever reviewed. Uh, we believe this is dated 1912. And it's a pump action. And it's in fairly decent shape. You can see there's been a little bit of pitting over the years on that receiver. Uh, the wood's in fairly good shape. I think there's a little bit of a crack here. My guess is at some point in time, somebody um, over-tightened a screw. But you can kind of see what's going on. Now, um, when you look at all three of these firearms together, you can kind of notice the size difference and the weight difference, which, you know, you're not going to notice that on a video. But this right here is just a gun that uh, is very simple in design, very beautiful, and uh, actually was used quite a bit for old time shooting galleries, which is hard to imagine in today's world, giving somebody a 22. Kind of hard to imagine the way we do things today that there was a time when people could Walk in and off the street, and they'd hand them a 22 rifle for plinking. That's the way it used to be a long time ago. So take a look at some of the stampings. This one is as a serial number under the receiver. Remington UMC, not to be confused with United States Marine Corps. It stands for Union Metallic Cartridge Company, which is another name for Remington. Of course, those were made in Ilion, New York. And uh, the Remington logo, which we've seen for a long time, used to really stand for a lot of quality. One thing I'm also going to focus on is if, uh, if you look at this particular tube on, uh, on the Marlin, it's pretty common with what you see today, where you, you basically rotate uh, this tube and there's a little, a little peg that, that holds it in place with a notch. Here's something that goes back to this design and I really like this and I don't know why we wouldn't do this more on today's firearms it's got a little spring-loaded catch so as you are pushing the tube in it actually is held in place just like that now I've seen not so much with 22s but I've seen using this system um, I've seen some larger caliber guns. I think back to the Henry Big Boy I had in 357. Mine didn't do it, but I've seen them where um, you've actually had this work loose because of recoil, and I've seen guys' tubes go shooting down range. 
So, uh, you know, why, why this type of design is not being used, I'm guessing it has something to do with cost. Also, notice how small these sights are. So small. And you're trying to uh, shoot at something at some kind of distance. You don't really get much of a sight picture when you compare this to, say, this much taller buckhorn sight on the Marlin. Last thing I'm going to point out and take a depth before I take this down, if you look at this uh, knurled screw, which is kind of like a knob on the Marlin 39A, you'll see that that same design was used on the Remington 12. It's a takedown screw, and it's made so that you can do it with your, your thumb and forefinger in the field as opposed to needing tools. And uh, I find that interesting. Sure won't see that on a firearm today. Now, when my son bought this rifle a couple days ago, um, one of the things that he uh, had issues with, and he took it out and shot it without, uh, without first cleaning it, uh, is he had some ejection issues with certain ammo. And um, when, he, when he first gave this to me to handle, I noticed that the, uh, the cycling on it was a little bit stiff, and I was curious how dirty it was. We took it down. There was a heck of a lot of dirt uh, between the extractor uh, and the bolt face. But as I mentioned, you have this, this little spring-loaded, um, uh, I'll call it a lever, I guess. It's a little button down here with, a, with a, a detent or a recess in the bottom of the receiver that that's how you do it. And something else I'll show you which is interesting. If you look at this real close, you'll see that the, the pump moves, uh, when you do the pump action, that the, the actual tube moves with the pump. Normally those are stationary. So that's kind of interesting. So we're going to show you uh, the takedown on this, which is really basic. You know, as I mentioned, it's got this knurled little knob. And you take this out. And it's a, it's a captive pin. So you don't, you don't back this all the way out, as you can see, okay? But once you do that, I kind of have to do it this way, keep gravity in my favor. This just slides right out. And then you can see function just like that. Now, in order to get, in order to get uh, your bolt out, it's not, it's not going to come out. But there's a little trick, and I actually saw this on another YouTube video. Here's a little spring-loaded detent that you, you push underneath your receiver with it depressed like that. And that allows you then to take this piece out. You pull forward, and that allows you to take this piece out. You can see looking at this real, real closely... Here's your extractor claw. It's spring-loaded. As I mentioned, there was a lot of dirt under there. And then here's your firing pin. It's on the side. Also a spring-loaded scenario, so your hammer's coming into contact with that. And uh, seems to be in pretty good shape. And, you know, this is 2021. This is from uh, 1912. So you can do the math on that. It's uh, 100, uh, 109 years old. But we clean this up real good and it's in good shape. And then to put it back together, slide this piece straight back on in. Want to make sure that you're nice and connected. And then uh, go ahead and tighten her down again. You can run into a problem if you've got a little bit of gap you don't realize and you're trying to thread this through the other side. Good to go. Pretty simple. And that's what uh, 
One thing that I like about some of these older 22s, the Marlin 39A, like, like we talked about in prior videos and today, this knob right here makes it real easy to get inside and, uh, and do your business. It's meant to be able to troubleshoot uh, without carrying a toolkit with you, which is also kind of a good idea, but just simplicity. Also has a cross trigger safety. Obviously, all these parts are metal. You can see the serial number. And uh, that was stamped on the bottom. There's no stampings on either side of the receiver. Some of the later models had that. You also had different length barrels. You also had octagonal barrels. But this one uh, just comes with a round barrel. But overall, very impressed with, uh, with the shape that this is in for the age, especially your... Your stock, very nice. Butt plate's got a little chip right here, and, and my son is wanting to find a replacement part for it. Personally, if it were me, I'd just leave it. Gives it some character, but as you can see, this is a, a firearm that, uh, especially for its age, looks good. And these are... Not super easy to get. Now, one of the other things I noticed about this, and, and, and I don't have a lot of experience with pump 22s, guys. I've uh, The only other pump besides shotguns that I've owned uh, was a Remington 7600 30-8, which is a little bit different affair. You're obviously going to have a, a much longer uh, stroke cycle with something shooting a, a round of that caliber. But uh, this seems to have a very short stroke cycle it looks like if I if I mark where uh, the the rearward position is and go forward uh, it looks like it's about an inch and a quarter uh, inch and three-eighths which is which is pretty minimal um, but this is fun I, I think the next thing we need to do is uh, let's get to the range let's see what kind of accuracy that uh, is possible with this. I, I, I don't think just based on the construction, uh, the very, very thin barrel compared to other 22s we've looked at lately. Uh, I don't expect this thing to be some kind of consistent tack driver, especially with these really tiny sights. But let's see how it does. I mean, the main thing is uh, we want this to shoot and eject uh, different kinds of 22 long rifle. Now this rifle uh, did well with every kind of ammo we tried except uh, one of the high velocity Winchesters that has a real flat nose uh, and one of the Aquilas. And uh, no, no reason at all to understand why you're seeing an example of that right there. But uh, with CCI, with Fionchi, and several other types we tried, including shorts, flawless function so really just a matter of uh, the kind of ammo and it's picky as a lot of these 22s especially older ones are uh, so you know what to get and it functions the way it's supposed to don't really know why that would be the case other than uh, I'm guessing uh, dimensionally whether it's with uh, the diameter of the case being slightly different I don't know for outdoor plinking nothing beats shooting at cheap pop cheap soda cans we find the cheapest we can get and uh, it's not hard to tell when you hit it and it's always a lot of fun when you do there it is What do you think? What's your impressions? It's a very cool gun. I like shooting this a lot. Fun? A lot of fun to shoot. Go for it. Okay, ready? Yep. That's a good one.
Well, guys, you've seen a lot of 22 rifles uh, coming over my channel over the last month, month and a half. Uh, why is that? Well, it's a couple different reasons. Number one, as you know, I do like the older stuff. Secondly, um, look at what's going on with ammo these days. Everything's scarce, but uh, I can still get 22 and I can still shoot 22 a heck of a lot cheaper than anything else. So we're, you know, what's the old saying? When life gives you lemons, make lemonades, and that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to let what's going on with uh, ammunition availability uh, stop me from having fun. And uh, it's, it's a cool end of the sport to get into. 22 rifles, looking at accuracy, looking at the different firearms that are available. And with some exceptions, uh, if you want to get your hands on different 22s, whether they happen to be new or old, you're not going to spend as much. So there's pluses to that all the way around. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on the channel today. As always, this is DR Drake 63 just reminding you, keep shooting, guys. Let's stick together and uh, let's have fun. Thanks.